Welcome, my fellow attorneys, to the National Bankruptcy Academy video series. I'm your host, Robert Schaller, an attorney with over 34 years of experience and a registered certified public accountant. Today, we'll be discussing Schedule A slash B property with a line by line analysis with real world commentary. I hope you enjoy the video. Every Chapter 7 debtor must file a schedule of assets. A debtor's asset schedule is officially titled Official Form 106A-B, Schedule A-B Property. This schedule identifies both real property and personal property. But what is the difference between real and personal property? Let's explore the definitions. Real property consists of land and anything permanently affixed to the land, homes, buildings, air rights above the land and underground rights below the land. Personal property consists of tangible, intangible, and financial assets. Tangible assets include cars, trucks, computers, jewelry, clothing, etc., including assets held by third parties on the debtor's behalf. Now, intangible assets are not physical in nature. They include patents, trademarks, copyrights, goodwill, brand recognition, etc. Financial assets include cash, savings accounts, checking accounts, 401k accounts, stocks, bonds, etc. Schedule A slash B property lists property interests that are involved in a bankruptcy case. All individuals filing for bankruptcy must list everything they own or have a legal or equitable interest in. Legal or equitable interest is a broad term and includes all kinds of property interests in both tangible and intangible property, whether or not anyone else has an interest in that property. The information in Schedule A slash B is grouped by category and includes several examples for many items. Note that those examples are meant to give the debtor an idea of what to include in the categories. They are not intended to be complete lists of everything within that category. Make sure the debtor lists everything the debtor owns or has an interest in. The debtor must verify under penalty of perjury that the information provided is complete and accurate, making a false statement, concealing property, or obtaining money or property by fraud in connection with a bankruptcy case can result in fines up to $250,000 or imprisonment for up to 20 years or both. It is important that the debtor understand the terms used in Schedule A slash B. A confusing term is community property. Community property is a type of property ownership available in certain states for property owned by spouses and in some instances, legal equivalents of spouses. Community property states and territories include Arizona, California, Idaho, Louisiana, Nevada, New Mexico, Puerto Rico, Texas, Washington, and Wisconsin. Current value is another term that some debtors confuse. In Schedule A slash B, the debtor must report the current value of the property that the debtor owns in each category. Current value is sometimes called fair market value. And for this schedule, is the, fir the fair market value as of the date of the filing of the bankruptcy petition. Current value is how much the property is worth, which may be more or less than when the debtor purchased the property. Property the debtor owns includes property the debtor has purchased, even if the debtor owes money on it, such as a home with a mortgage or an automobile with a lien. The debtor must report the current value of the portion the debtor owns. For each question, report the current value of the portion of the property that the debtor owns. To do this, the debtor would usually determine the current value of the entire property and then determine the percentage of the property the debtor owns. Multiply the current value of the property by the percentage that the debtor owns. Report the result where Schedule A slash B asks for current value of the portion the debtor owns. For example, if the debtor owns a house by himself, the debtor owns 100% of that house. Report the entire current value of the house. However, if the debtor and a sister own the house equally, report 50% of the value of the house or half the value of the house. In certain categories, current, va current value may be difficult to figure out. When the debtor cannot find the value from a reputable source, such as a pricing guide for a car, Estimate the value and be prepared to explain how the debtor determined it. List items only once in Schedule A slash B. Do not list them more than one category. 
lists all real estate in Part 1 and all other property in the other parts of the form. Where the debtor lists similar items of minimal value, such as clothing, add the value of the items and report a total. Be specific when describing each item. If the debtor owns an item that the debtor thinks could fit into more than one category, select the most suitable category and list the item there. Separately describe and list individual items worth more than $500. Make sure that the values the debtor reports on Schedule A slash B match the values reported on Schedule D, creditors who have claims secured by your property, and also on Schedule C, the property you claim as an exempt. Now, let's turn our attention to this bankruptcy form with a line-by-line -line analysis with real-world commentary. I hope you enjoy the video. Now let's start completing Schedule A slash B for the example that we've been using in the petition of George and Martha Washington. So at the very top of Schedule A slash B, you have the form very similar, if not identical, to the top box on the petition. It says, fill in this information to identify your case and this filing. You'll see this form, a box on uh, every form and almost every document that's going to be submitted to the bankruptcy court. It's vital that the court is able to organize its documents and it has to have the debtor's name and case number uh, if, if uh, case number exists. Let's start filling out this box. Debtor one is George Washington. And debtor two is Martha Washington. We're filing in the Eastern District of Virginia. So go to the pull down menu. And find the Eastern District of Virginia. Click on it. The next is the case number. But in this case, we're filing Schedule A slash B at the same time as the petition is filed. And therefore, there is no case number yet assigned. As you remember from the petition, the case number will be assigned by the clerk of the U.S. Bankruptcy Court once the case is filed. Over here to the right, it says check if this is an amended filing. An amended Schedule A slash B is an example of a document filed when, for example, a car was omitted originally, or there is an error such as the year, make, or model of the car, and that's going to be amended. So if it was an amended document, we click the box. Come over here to the case number and insert the case number. And we know there would be a case number upon uh, filing an amended document because by definition, the original document, the petition had to have already been filed for an amended document to be filed. But in this case, this is an original filing, so there would be no case number. So I'm going to delete the case number and uncheck the box saying if this is an amended filing. Next, let's read the uh, instructions for Schedule A slash B. In each category, separately list and describe items. List an item only once. If an asset fits in more than one category, list the asset in the category where you think it fits best. Be as complete and accurate as possible. If two married people are filing together, such as this case, both are equally responsible for supplying correct information. If more space is needed, attach a separate sheet to this form. As you'll see, we will be attaching an addendum to Schedule A slash B in this example of George and Martha Washington. Now let's move down the form to Part 1. Part 1 is titled, Describe Each Residence, Building, Land, or Other Real Estate You Own or Have an Interest In. Question one, do you own or have any legal or equitable interest in any residence, building, land, or similar property? So in this case, George and Martha Washington do. So I'm going to check the box, yes, and then start completing line 1.1. What is the street? And that's 3200 Mount Vernon in the city of Mount Vernon. and the county is Fairfax. Now the middle column over here, what is the property? Check all that apply. The document wants the debtor to identify the type of property that the debtor owns. That would help the trustee understand 
what is the property? In this case, it's just a single family home, so we'll check the box. But let's go through the other types of property that must be identified in this part one, line one. It could be a duplex or multi-unit building. It could be a condominium or cooperative, a manufactured or mobile home, just land, undeveloped land, investment property, timeshare, or some other. Before this form was amended, the issue of timeshare was of great difficulty. Sometimes people thought of timeshare as real estate or an ownership interest in real estate. Other times they listed it as non-real estate later in part two of this form. But the form now makes it pretty clear that what they're looking for is in, in line one, part one, is if this is land, I'm sorry, is this a timeshare? And that's where it would show up. Now note above that says, what is the property? Check all that apply. Well, this could be single family, but imagine it was a single family that was not owned um, for purposes of being a residence, but simply an investment. If that was the case, we would check both the single family home box and we would check the investment property box. So you can have more than one box checked. But in this case, it is their residence, so we're gonna uncheck the investment property. Over here to the right, it has, what's the current value of the entire property? In this case, it's $350,000. Next it says, what's the current value of the portion you own? Well, since this is a joint filing and is owned by the debtor and his wife, you include the entire $350,000. says, describe the nature of your ownership interests, such as fee simple, tenancy by the entireties, or a life estate. So we know it's tenancy by the entireties, so we'll list that. Next is, in the middle, who has an interest in the property? Well, this is going to be the debtor, George Washington, and debtor to Martha Washington, and they're the only owners. So we're going to check the third box down. If it was only George Washington, we would check the first box, debtor one. If it was only Martha Washington, we'd check debtor two only. And as we'll see in the next line, what happens if it's owned by somebody other than a debtor? You would check the final box. Now, in the middle down below, it says other information you wish to add about this item, such as local property identification number or PIN number. The PIN number is helpful uh, for the trustee to try to really determine the value and if there are any sold real estate taxes. And a, a property identification number is a unique number issued typically by the county in which the property is located so that the county officers can identify specifically that parcel of real estate. So in this example, I'll uh, enter the PIN number. Now moving down the form, on 1.2, it asks, list if you own any other property. So yes, George and Martha Washington, in fact, do own other property. So what is the property? They own a condo in Miami, Florida. So let's add the address. and that's in the city of Miami. And it's in the county of Miami-Dade. And now in the center is what is the property? List all that applies. So we know it's a condominium, so we're coming down and we'll check the condominium box. Now over to the side, it says, what's the current value of the entire property? Notice the word entire. So that means what's the value of everything, the fair market value, not just the debtor's interest. So in this case, it's $280,000. Now in the box to the right, it says, what's the current value of the portion you own, meaning one of the debtors, one or both of the debtors. But in this particular case, only half of the interest is owned by the debtor. The other half is owned by somebody else. Okay, so we're going to put in 140000 showing a half interest. And how is the property owned? The property is owned uh, as uh, fee simple. 